This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings. So she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Thursday, March the 31st, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story, the environmental authorities in Barbados have so far refused to comment on what appears to be a national disaster that has started to happen. However, when a, a team from Barbados today visited Coles Cave in St. Thomas recently, they were first greeted by the awful stench of discarded molasses, which upon further investigation revealed a much bigger problem arising from the seepage of hundreds of tons of the tar-like substance into the cave, which up until recently has been a popular tourist attraction. However, if anything, the cave is now proving a turn-off for those who were previously attracted to the fact that it has not been altered as much by man as the nearby Harrison Cave, the island's leading tourist attraction, located a mere 0.4 miles from the dump site at Mount Wilton in St. Thomas, where several containers of molasses have been dumped. To make matters worse, the problem of dumping, which has now affected coals, has been done with the blessing of the Environmental Protection Department. More than $13 million in illegal drugs went up in smoke yesterday as officers of the police drug squad dumped some three years' worth of evidence down the furnace at Sewell in Christ Church. The officers burned over a ton of processed cannabis and 25,360 plants with a combined street value in excess of $5 million, as well as 368.3 pounds of cocaine, estimated at $8.1 million. When the smoke cleared, Public Relations Officer Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch told reporters who witnessed the destruction of the contraband that the items were at the center of court hearings dating back to 2013. The illegal drugs came into police possession in several ways. Through the forces in interdiction exercises, through drug landings, search warrants, and other investigations. The amount of cannabis that we will have seen destroyed today would be 2,506.2 pounds of cannabis, 358.3 pounds of cocaine. Also to note is that we would have destroyed a small amount of liquid cannabis, the resin that you will derive from cannabis. Meanwhile, drug pushers appear to have found a clever way to openly peddle narcotics in a growing trend that has caused unease among the police. As a result, the Royal Barbados Police Force has put school principals and parents on notice to keep their eyes peeled for children using a type of cookie known as brownies. Welch also said these cookies contain liquid derived from marijuana. In sports now, Barbadian Olympics bronze medalist Obadella Thompson has expressed optimism about this island's athletics following the country's showing at this year's Carifta Games in Grenada. But Thompson, who at one point ran the fastest wind-assisted time in the world, told Barbados today from his Texas home that the major challenge now was to assist these athletes with their transition from the junior ranks, where they have shown much promise, to the senior international level, where they could compete against the best in the world. He also believes Barbados could make it to the finals of this year's Olympics. No, the, the medals aren't given out until it's the final result, which means that it doesn't make a difference what you ran or, or how you did in the semifinal. You have to turn up and do it again. Now, I think that we are in a position where we may have um, a couple potential finalists, and, and that's the big thing. I mean, even when I was competing, my coaches would always say, make the finals, because that's the biggest thing. So if, I think we have 
a handful of young athletes who are on the cusp of potentially making the finals of the Olympics, certainly getting through the first round, maybe the second round. And I think at that stage, um, it, it's just a matter of doing your best and hoping uh, that your best at that particular moment is better than the other competitors that you're against. In more sports, it's being built as the Gale versus Ashwin battle. That's when the West Indies fearsome batsman Chris Gale and India's bowling genius A. Ashwin joined their teams on the field of play this morning in the ICC World 2020 blockbuster that would determine who will meet England in the final. Gale says he will not be focusing on names, just intent on beating the ball as hard as possible and playing according to the situation to ensure victory for the Caribbean side. I'm looking at what, you know, show what Chris Gale, I'll be prepared, I'll be ready uh, mentally for whichever particular bowler is not the focus on Ashwin. You know, you have so many bowlers there who actually can near as bowling well as, you know, he's doing with the, with the new ball near as very good. So, you know, we just have to keep our eyes open, you know, play according to the situation. You know, Chris Gale will always be positive. Um, it doesn't matter which bowler is actually going to be bowling um, against Chris Gale. You know, Chris Gale looking to attack. Um, that's the nature of T20 cricket, and that's the nature of Chris Gale as well. You know, no names, just 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 the cricket ball. Try and beat it as hard as possible. There's regional and international news after this short break. The 50th anniversary of Independent Secretariat and the National Cultural Foundation proudly present the theatrical production from Bassa to Barrow and beyond. We are not slaves. Saturday, April 16th at 6.30 p.m. at the historic Golden Grove Plantation. Come, be a witness to history. Aye, Nanny Quig. Enter the ritual. Feel the power. This country will be independent. And if I have to wake up all the sleeping angels in heaven, so be it. From Bassa to Barrow and beyond. April 16th. Tickets $50 adults, $10 youth and children. Available at all NCF outlets and at TicketPal.com. Turning out the news from the region, a Shanique Myrie type case appears to have hit Trinidad and Tobago. And that country's chief immigration officer has been ordered by the National Security Minister Edmund Dillon to submit a report to him over claims by two Jamaican nationals that they were treated badly by immigration officers and made to sleep in deplorable conditions after being denied entry at Piaco International Airport. More in this TV6 News report. National Security Minister Edmund Dillon tells TV6 News via telephone that he requested a report from the Chief Immigration Officer regarding allegations made by two Jamaican nationals who claimed they refused entry into Trinidad and Tobago at the Piaco International Airport and allegedly held in deplorable conditions. There is a renewed call in CARICOM member state Jamaica for a ban of all products from CARICOM member state Trinidad and Tobago over the matter. We asked Minister Dillon about the government's position on the issue. I think when you get to the facts of the matter first, and before you get even into the, 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 the reaction to it. So once I have the facts of the matter, and then we can see what the reaction is. The Jamaica Gleaner has reported that Jamaica's Foreign Affairs Ministry has intervened even though it did not receive a formal report. The two Jamaicans claim they were made to sleep on the airport's floor not allowed to use the bathroom, and were mocked and insulted by the Trinidad police. On the international scene, U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump briefly called for some form of punishment for women who have abortions if it became illegal. His initial comments made during a town hall event 
with cable network MSNBC sparked a wave of criticism. However, Trump quickly reversed his position, saying only the person who performed the abortion should be punished. Abortion has been legal in the United States since 1973, after a landmark Supreme Court ruling. That's news and sports. However, you can join us again this afternoon for more. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune in to Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.